Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor One. What a blessing to be here with you. Um, we, uh, we also had the, the privilege of having uh, Pastor One and uh, Pastor Confidence come to Ethiopia. The, the times we had was very brief but very effective. And uh, we were mutually blessed, and we thank God for all of you and what you're doing here. It's a great privilege to be, to be here. I feel a little bit like home, depending on the level of smilification. <laughs> <laughs> and Pastor Brandon, it's just a blessing hanging out with you the last few days, and uh, I'm going to give you my number for the same reasons that you have Pastor One's number. <laughs> yeah, uh, Pastoring is a lot, largely uphill, with a few downhills, but largely uphill. Have you heard of Kilimanjaro? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and um, uh, of course, uh, Alem and uh, Alexi, this family for us, they've been part of our church and uh, their family. And uh, they're responsible largely for all of this, so that's, that's, that's a, a blessing. And a lot of these kids that they have were non, in non existence when we knew each other, just to give you some idea. So uh, it's a blessing, and of course, Pastor Muse, uh, first of many. Uh, we, it's funny, like, uh, if there was any Sunday to be back home for us, for me and, and Muse, it's, it's today. Uh, and the Lord said, no, you too. And the reason is, is because for the first time ever, uh, our, our national TV, uh, Ethiopian television, has brought their cameras to our service. To, to record and broadcast live across the nation, which is kind of a, a big deal. We don't do that every day. We, we do that never. <laughs> and, uh, and the theme was, you know, I don't know if you've heard the news, but we've had a lot of challenges in our country the last uh, season. It's been uh, interesting, to say the least. And um, the name of the program was um, Ethiopia Tamaskin, Let Ethiopia Worship or let Ethiopia praise God. And of all the churches, they chose our church, and they came with cameras to our church, and the pastor and the worship pastor are not there. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the Lord orders our steps. I think there's something to that. We are not supposed to be there by design, because we had to be here. You know, like, in the grand scheme of things, you know, how God... Move, you know, we're all little, little pawns on the chessboard, and God is the master chess player. And he said, okay, checkmate. Whom you guys, for Ethiopia worships, you leave Ethiopia, and uh, we'll see what, what happens. I hope they don't burn the house down, make us embarrassed. But it's kind of good, because if something goes wrong, we just stay here. <laughs> we don't know those people. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I, was, uh, I was asked just to share some things that's on my heart. Of course, before I get into that, I want to invite everybody, everybody, including Pastor Brandon, to Africa Arise, our annual event. It's, um, it's uh, yeah, you just have to come and see it. How do you put it in? It's really something special. The Lord has given us responsibility to steward, and uh, we've been able to network across the continent for um, just the ability to talk together, see each other, and talk about our problems together, and come up with our solutions together, and also praise God ridiculously together. Um, and it's been uh, something that we kind of stumbled into, but we sensed that uh, it was something much bigger than us, and uh, the camaraderie we've been able to develop in these meetings, and uh, the influence and impact that it's had, it's not small. And I think um, uh, I would just like to extend an invitation. It's usually held the first week of February every year. We are going to have this man here with us. So um, just, just he'll give you all the information, but we would love to have as many people uh, come and join us because I think it's a significant um, uh, program that God has, uh, has given us for the purposes of his kingdom in our continent. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, today, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, praying yesterday. I said, Lord, you know, you, you, you know so much. I've been in ministry for, for a long time. I think... Uh, yeah, a long time. And um, you know a lot, you can say a lot. And uh, when you come to a place like this, 
it's not just showing you what I know or saying how, how cool this is. Uh, but, you know, really, I believe that God has, has his own opinion and maybe something to say. <clears throat> so it's my custom just to ask, Lord, what's going on? What do you feel? And uh, he kind of led me uh, down this, this path. And it says the neighborhood that I've been in the last uh, season. And uh, it's kind of basic, but it, it's a, a little bit, you know, the, the, the mystery sometimes is in the most basic things. And we miss it because it's so simple sometimes. And uh, that's something that uh, I've been personally extremely impacted by in recent months. And uh, I started sharing this in, in my church. That would have been the message in church in Ethiopia today for Ethiopia worships today. But it's Pretoria, South Africa worships <laughs> today. Uh, age is getting up there, so I have to resort to these nowadays. Yeah. Uh, I uh, have one wife, Pastor One said, my, my, my youngest daughter just left me, went to America for university. Like the day before I flew here, I sent my, my baby off to that wild and crazy um, uh, <laughs> place that, that is very disturbing and troubling. And I'm going to leave that to Pastor Brandon to sort out. <laughs> but uh, it was the perfect tonic to leave the very next day and come here because, you know, it's just good to be away from home when no one's there. Am I, I'm just venting, excuse me. <laughs> um, Mark chapter 4, please. Uh, and uh, I would just like to look at some, some familiar passages, something we're familiar with here. Mark chapter 4. And um, just start reading uh, from the first verse. The NIV is uh, what I'll be using, if that's comfortable for you. Um, yeah. Again, verse 1, again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil, and it came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was all alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Now, just jump down to me, verse 20, please. Uh, it says, others, others, like seed on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. Others, others like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce. Amen? Yeah. So, Father God, here we are. Thank you. We've already prayed. I just ask for you to put something on my mouth, and put something in our ear, and may we leave different from the way that we came in. For you are surely here among us, and I give you advanced praise in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, in this passage, it says in verse number 11, he told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. The secret, he called it, this the secret of the kingdom of God. The title of my message today is, It's a Secret. Mm. I turn to your neighbor and say, It's a Secret. Mm. Tell, tell your other neighbor, the man said, It's a Secret. Mm. Yeah. 
Now, when we're talking about secrets, it's a little bit, a little bit funny because secret, a secret is something that's it's not common knowledge. It's, it's, it's veiled from access to most people. But a few people who know the secret are able to interact with it. If you know the secret and everybody else does, that's what makes it a secret. If everybody knows it, it's no longer a secret because it's common knowledge now. Secret is not disclosed to everybody. It's only disclosed to those with special access, special privilege, special people, like myself this morning. <laughs> but it says it's, this, it's a secret, meaning this, isn't, this is hidden from most people. And, and if it's a secret, it's very likely you can miss it unless someone helps you or someone reveals and unpacks that thing for you. Otherwise, you'll miss it completely. But then Jesus, he goes to the disciples and he explains exactly what the secret is. So, so, so he says, and, and, he, and he explains it very simple. Farmer went to sow seed, verse 14. The farmer sows the word. It's, it should not really be a secret because anyone who, I mean, we all benefit from agricultural endeavors. That's why we eat, right? But it's a secret. The common is secret. And the secret is in the common. And he said, the farmer sows the word. And then it says in verse 20, like I had mentioned, and the, uh, the, the, the seed sown on good, uh, the seed sown on good soil, it says they hear the word and accept it. And then through that, they produce. So the secret is very simple, but it can be easily missed because all the secret is is to hear the word. The seed is the word. Uh, the, the secret is those who hear the word, accept the word, are the ones who produce. Now, it seems so simple. What's the big deal? But it's, isn't it funny how the simple can be so, so complicated and how the simple, we can miss it so much and how the, the simple thing slips from our hand and we're, we're in the kingdom and we miss the whole point because Jesus is all, all he's really looking for. The, 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 Luke, uh, the Luke translation or the Luke version of the gospel where it talks about this parable, it talks about hearing the word, persevering and producing. But in the most basic essence, all we're dealing with is those who hear and accept. Uh, and if we hear and accept and do it properly, welcome to the kingdom. The secret is no longer a secret. You are in the kingdom. Eh? You are benefiting from the kingdom and you're producing the kingdom. Hearing and accepting. Now isn't that simple? This tells us that there's a lot of things that we might be doing that's not the kingdom. Uh, even in the kingdom. <laughs> For example, you know, like, you know, you're like us, you know, pulling off a good service and we did good. Whew. It's great to have a good service, but that's not the kingdom. Mm? Ah, you could be doing the great service and be so far from the kingdom, from the secret. It's a secret. Uh, it's hidden. Um, we could have a great missions outreach program, evangelistic event, crusade, and being the biggest event, and, and put on the biggest, and show off the biggest, and pull it off even. And, and you know, people come forward to accept Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yeah? The money goes into the bank account. Come on, somebody. Yeah? <laughs> And, and, you know, the posters and everything and the, the, the like, I mean, in our church, you know, today we're on national TV. <laughs> and I'm not even there. I can't believe that. <laughs> they didn't even tell us. You know, we found out after we got here. Like, it was like a quick, quick order from somewhere. I don't know. Quick command. And I'm not even there. And, and so we're, we're like, we, I mean, that's, that's what, what do we call that here? In America, we call it, that's the Super Bowl, Right. In our, what do we do here? Is it the, the, the cricket match? or what, what do we do here? Huh? Soweto. Mam Mamoleni. Sundowns. Do you know? Was it, yeah. Do you know we got an Ethiopian striker? We, you just, we just signed. Mamoleni. Yeah? That's why I came here to make sure everything's okay for him. <laughs> But, I mean, you could, you could pull off the great, amazing event and, and pull up. But that does not mean that you are hearing and accepting. You can do so much without hearing and accepting. Here's a, tr a funny one that actually was difficult for me. You could even have an anointing, a gift of power, miracles, all right? And you could be in the midst of that gift of grace. And that does not mean that you are hearing and accepting. You could do all that and still not be. This was a mystery for me because God's grace is given just 
by his calling, election, and choosing, it's given without repentance. So you could have a tremendous gift of ministry, preaching, teaching, uh, healing, and all these amazing things, you know, how we do in Africa. You know, in, in well, let me go, I use my time wisely, all right? <laughs> but, but that is one thing, and that's good, and that is God. But that's not the secret. The secret is just hearing and accepting the message. And hearing and accepting the message. Maybe you don't have a gift, all right? And you feel like you're left out because everyone else around you has the gift but you. But if you're hearing and accepting, you're in the kingdom. You understand the secret and you will produce what they're not able to produce because the secret is hearing and accepting. Amen, amen? We're doing all right? Praise the Lord. And you see, whereas the secret is blind to us, the enemy knows all about the secret. So the enemy works over time to mess with us because he knows what happens when we start hearing and accepting. The Bible says that the seed sown along the path, the enemy sees the seed and snatches it to keep it from bearing. He's afraid, not of the big event. He's afraid that somebody will understand the secret and that he will start hearing and accepting and start producing. And that's his, that's, that's his modus operandi from the Garden of Eden. You know, the command had been given. God had spoken. And the first introduction to the serpent, he comes in and starts asking questions to separate, separate, cause separation between the hearing and accepting. Just because we're hearing does not mean we're... Ooh. Hmm? And he said, I know God said, but wait a minute. Did God really say? And everything was fine until she started entertaining this. The enemy knows the secret. And he does not want you to benefit from the secret. He does not want you to reap all the blessing that God has from the secret. And he will fight to get right in between your hearing and accepting. So corrupt the whole process. Make you unfruitful ground. Uh, this, is, this is why the message... It has to be properly stewarded, and we have to understand the power of the secret and what the secret has the power to do in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's personal, but as we do it each personally, we start to bear fruit. Some 30, some 60. Some 100 fold. No lights, no camera, no national TV program. Just me and myself hearing and accepting. I'm producing fruit. I can do that anywhere. I can do that anytime. I don't need a big platform. I don't need a big fame and, and my name up in lights. You know how we, 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 we use the same standards for the world to judge spiritual success. Right? Hollywood makes a, a funny comedian like what we produce here. We love Trevor Noah, by the way, in, in, in Ethiopia. Hmm? But, but uh, you know, that's the success. You know, he fills the stadium. He makes people laugh. His picture is there. And then we bring that to the kingdom. That's not the secret. The secret is hearing and accepting. And when we hear and accept the simple message, it starts to work on our behalf. Hallelujah starts to produce. That's why, you know, when we be defeat the enemy, you really hurt the enemy where painfully, where you hit him between the eyes, just when you hear and accept. That's why, you know, uh, I was thinking about this. You know, in the, the Old Testament, um, when, when, uh, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, you all remember that story, um, the final plague was the plague of the firstborn, all right? And the instructions were to take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost of their house, right? And the Bible says the death angel came, saw the blood, and passed over. Victory. Hallelujah. But you know what I found out? Is that um, where the blood caused the enemy to pass over the house, I found out, like, over time, the real enemy was not the devil coming in from the outside, but the thinking that's going on on the inside. Because the same generation that came out of the wilderness perished in the wilderness because they had this struggle between hearing and accepting. And I think that's why in the New Testament we don't have the, you know, we have the blood of Jesus, but we don't put the blood of Jesus on the door of our house or the communion wine on the door of our house. 
we actually put it on the inside of our house. Like actually, it, we, we do this in remembrance to take that message of hearing and accepting and bringing it together, internalizing it. In fact, Hebrews 9 and 10 says that the blood of Jesus, it goes to the conscience. Do you know what conscience is in its most basic definition? Hearing and accepting. <laughs> yeah. And, and see, whatever we accept, that's what we prepare for. Whatever we accept, that's what we plan for. Whatever we accept, that's where our expectation lies, for better or for worse. So, so ex accepting, hearing and accepting, it's not a small thing. It's a secret because we can miss it. But whatever we accept, that's what we prepare for. That's what we govern our lives by. And it has such a strong control over our lives because all of us are already accepting something. All right? And we are planning according to whatever it is that we have accepted. All right? And so, so, so if we accept wrong, all right, the, the, the ship has a, a crack in the foundation. And we've already started sinking. Am I doing okay? Amen? This is a good word for rooted fellowship. Hmm? It's an agricultural term. Come on, somebody. The Bible says we demolish every argument and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ, hearing and accepting. Now, now let me say this. This is something I also was thinking about. Uh, when we talk about hearing and accepting, we're talking about the promises of God. When we're talking about the promises of, promises of God, promises of God are different from doctrine. Can I repeat? Promises of God are different from doctrine. Now, doctrine is good. Doctrine gives us kind of like some boundaries to kind of define what it is we're looking at so that we can kind of gather people around pulling in the same direction. Okay? But doctrine is not the promise. All right? And it's through the promise, okay, that we start to uh, produce and accept. Uh, and uh, hear and accept and start to produce. Some of you went south on me when I said that. No, let, let me explain. Doctrine is good. I didn't say doctrine was bad. We all need doctrine. We need to go somewhere, okay? But, but, but the real power of this, this, this secret, it's not tied to doctrine. I'm sorry. All right? Your doctrine could be weak, and you could still understand the secret. Hmm? Abraham, you know what Abraham was told? He said, this, this is the plan, Abraham. Come outside. Now look up at the stars. And now look at the sand. So shall your offspring be. I mean, the, the covenant for you is that you will be a father of many nations. And, and this is eh, the promise. Stars at night. The sun goes down sand during the day. So you meditate the word day and night. And develop a hearing and accepting. Now, doctrine, that's very, very weak doctrine. That's stupid doctrine. <laughs> stars and sand. But see, this is beyond doctrine. This is promise. See, and the Bible says Abraham was able, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Amen, amen. Eh? And the Bible says he was able to become a father eh, by faith. He did not become a father when he had a child. He became a father by faith. He became a father by hearing and accepting. So all he's doing with those stars, he has to, has to make a decision between his, his dead body and the promise. You see? That's beyond doctrine. That's my life. <laughs> all right? And, and he chose, okay, I'm going to hear and accept. And with every passing day for 25 years, he's getting older and the promise is getting farther. And, and he has to get into the, into the deep in, uh, recesses of his mind. Start to make some decisions in there. So what are we going to accept today? Well, let's accept the promise. Because as long as the stars are still there, God's promise is true. And he became a father of all of us by faith. Hallelujah. It's a secret. Hmm? It's right under our nose, but at the same time, it's so far away from us. And, and so this is, this is the challenge for all of us. Are, are we... Understanding the secret? Are we partaking of the secret? Are we benefiting from the secret? Hmm? Hallelujah. Good preaching, Pastor Z. 
Praise the Lord. I'd like us to go, please, uh, my first closing African preacher, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And I think this is why the secret, what I'm about to share now, I think this is why the secret is so elusive. Yeah, let me just go into the material here. Mark chapter 16, verse 1, it says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Hmm. Very early on the first day of the week, just after the sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. It's not Easter Sunday, but work with me. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robes sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed. He said, we're looking for Jesus, Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Go and tell his disciples. And Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Verse 8, trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Um... Our, 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 our struggle will always be to understand and embrace the secret. Our struggle will always be what we have seen. And, and the fight will be between what we hear and accept versus what we see. All right? Now, if, if, you, if you go right back to the, ver- the chapter previously, the end of ver- ver- Mark 15, um, uh, it says the story of how Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body, put it in his own tomb. You know the story. But verse 40 says, um, uh, so, okay, verse 46. So Joseph brought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen and placed it in the tomb, cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. He rolled the stone against the ent- uh, entrance of the tr- tomb. And Mary Magdalene... Uh huh. And Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where they laid him. Now, if if you if you you know all know the story, this uh, the Matthew's gospel, it talks about how when when what the angel told him is Jesus is not here; he has risen from the dead, just like he said. So he had said something, and now they have seen something. When they came to the tomb, they saw where Joseph had laid them. And it's the same Mary Magdalene in chapter 15 is the same Mary Magdalene, unless there's really high coincidence. That <laughs> it's the same Mary Magdalene in, in Mark chapter 16. So in Mark chapter 15, Mar- Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb and sees where he laid. Now, did Jesus say, I will raise from the dead? He already said. But now we have something to see. And they went and started making preparations according not to what he said. But they started making preparations according to what they seen. And their whole life is constructed and their, the steering wheel has turned in the direction of what they have seen. And, and, and so uh, I know this is a bit dramatic. I mean, this is dead and death and life stuff. And, you know, it's very normal if someone is dead to bury them, but not if it's Jesus. And not if he said that I'm going to rise again. Are you following what I'm saying? So the enemy now is between what I have seen, or the fight is between what I have seen and what I have heard and what he said. And so my question to somebody today is what has he said to you? And what have you seen? And what now have you accepted? Because this is the secret. (laughs) This is how... That this is why it's a secret. <laughs> because it's so elusive from all of us. We all live in a three-dimensional world that commands and speaks and preaches to us and, and we plan accordingly. But what did he say? 
Amen? If he said he's going to raise from the dead, then it changes the spirit and attitude. If you accept that, it changes the spirit and attitude by which you come to the tomb. You don't bring burial spices. You bring your hallelujah dance to the tomb if, if you have accepted. But, but what you see is so powerful eh? that it causes you to forget everything. Mm. Oh, Lord, it's going to be a fight today. I, I can feel it. But today I'm announcing for Rooted Fellowship. Today is graduation Sunday in Jesus' name. Graduation from what you have been seeing. And graduation into what he has said. And accepting what he has said. Hallelujah. Because the devil is a liar. And the deliverer provides for us so much things to see. That's not, it's not what we should be accepting today, church. What did he say? Let's accept that. Hallelujah. Because our God is faithful. He is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should change his mind. If God said something by the very essence of his character, he has to perform what he says. The question is not whether or not he is able. The question is, do you understand the secret? Do you hear and accept? Because if you hear and accept, you will bear fruit. That's how powerful his promise is. So, so you could be in the wrong doctrine, believing in the stars and sand. Where are you going to church this morning, Abraham? I'm going to Stars and Sand Church International. <laughs> Crazy, Abraham. It's not. It's, it, it, yes, thank God for your. But it's about what you have accepted. Do you accept the promise of God? Do you expect, uh, ex expect uh, that, that if he said this tomb, I'll rise out of this tomb, that you have that expect? That's basically what faith is. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, from time to time, uh, you will come across things in your life that gives an option for you, one of two things. Mm. And, and, and it's funny because once you get in a habit of moving according to what you've seen, and you start developing patterns, you're still be coming to church. You're, you're, you look good. We all look good. Mm. But the longer you stay in that pattern, the farther you will be moved from the secret. And you will develop what the Bible calls a form of godliness. But denying the power. I personally have a, 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 a vision that I believe God has given. And uh, we, we, we have a vision for our nation of Ethiopia. We have a vision for the continent of Africa. I don't have time to get into all of it. But the Lord visited me one time very powerfully before I ever came. I, I used to be in America. Uh, I used to be a youth pastor in America. One night the Lord spoke to me about my homeland where I was born. I was born in Ethiopia, but I didn't live there. I grew up in very many different countries and cultures. Uh, but the Lord started speaking to me about Ethiopia. And he started to speaking to me about uh, a river that God has planned that will flow from that place. Uh, and he started talking about how blessing would be even found there. And that blessing would come from the least likely place. You know, you all know Ethiopia. We, we're known for a lot of things, not necessarily the blessing. It's tribalism, corruption, corruption, and did I mention corruption? <laughs> mm. But God said, okay, that's what you see. But there is a promise from heaven. I have something special in store for that place. And we moved uh, just we, we, with my family and my brother Saleh had been ministering. We moved and we started. After a while, we met this, 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 this. <laughs> <laughs> And then we met also Alexi and Alem. They can testify. And we, we just, we've, we've had to defy everything that we see almost on a daily basis. And, and especially this last year, we've had this civil war, which looks like anything but the promise of God. Before Ukraine, it was Ethiopia. And we had all of these crazy, like my, my own wife and my children left the country, as well as a lot of our international community in the church. Because the embassies were saying leave because it's going to be a terrible bloodshed and uh, it's, it's one thing to pastor, it's another thing to pastor in that kind of chaos. And every Sunday I stand up and then the church looks so different. And the reason they look so different is because of what they have seen. When you see something, you start preparing and you accept what you see, you start preparing accordingly. And I've had to take people back again and again. But God said, 
From this place a blessing shall flow. From this place a blessing. But God has said. Eh, the hands of begging will turn to hands of blessing. But God has said rivers of life will flow far from this place. I have to pull people back every week. Every, I know it's crazy. and some, you know, It's been very tragic. I'm not making light of this. One of our ministry centers was right in the, the eye of the storm of the war. And we had a lot of damage done. A lot of traumatic things happened. And it's painful, and it's not easy. But God has said. And we've had to fight this back and forth every time. And, and, and uh, uh, what it does is it strengthens your faith muscle. And, uh, but one thing that I've also realized is that it's a fight. It's a big fight because what you see is so powerful. What you see is right in your face. But today, I just this is also for me as much as it is for you. Today, I announce to myself and to all of us mm, what God said is true. He's not a man that he should lie. That rivers of God will flow from this continent. That we will be a blessing to all nations of the world. Uh, what's your policy, agenda, legislation to make this happen? What's the strategy? The strategy is that if I hear and accept, <laughs> I will produce. And if you hear and accept, you will produce. You will plan according to what you have received. And you will start to expect exactly what you have accepted. And so may the Lord help us today in this graduation ceremony. Mm. I said today is grad. You know you go from kindergarten to what, what, what is it here in South Africa? Do you go grade one, grade two, grade... Is it by grades? You don't do forms? You know, grades. In Kenya we do forms. Uh, grade one, today we're graduating to grade two from seeing to accepting. Hallelujah. It's accepting what we have heard. Accepting what, and this is corporate for the church as a family, but it's also very individual. If we are accepting something corporately, but you have not bought in individually, hmm? we haven't bought in, bought in uh, corporately either. Yeah. Hearing and accepting. So this is a personal word for me as, as much as it is for you. Amen? Amen? I've told you the secret. It's hidden from most people's eyes. But to you, you understand the secret today. Amen? Amen, amen? Could we all stand? I just want to pray for the church today. I want to encourage Pastor One and his family. They've been such a blessing to us. But I think this would be one of the best ways to encourage the, the church. It's hard to counsel people when they've heard and accept something different. It's hard to lead them in the way of the truth. I know it's difficult. My life is difficult. We all have challenges. My, my, my baby just left. Challenges. And the funny thing is she was happy to leave. You know, that's what, <laughs> what did he say? I know life is difficult. I know it hurts. I know they said this to you. I know they did. But what did he say? I know the sickness is staring you in the face. But what did he say? I know the country is going into all kinds of chaos and, and difficulty. But what did he say? What did he say? What did he say, rooted fellowship? And what he said, number one, number two, what do we accept today? Let God be true. And every man a liar. Father, in Jesus' name, this is graduation Sunday. You, are, you do according to your word. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray for somebody today. That they will just win that little battle deep within their hearts. Hallelujah. Church, we make, we make church so much about performance. And, and did I do a good job? Did I pull it off? Myself included. But Father God, you are not like man. Man looks at outward appearance. You look at the heart. Specifically, you look at hearing and accepting. We are weak. We, we have issues. But today, Father God, I've declared graduation into the secret. Into hearing what God has said and accepting what God has said. In Jesus' name, Father God, let, let the, 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 the gap be bridged today in our hearts in Jesus' name. For each and every one of us, Father God. Mm. And I pray, Father God, for those who are facing a surmountable challenge today. That your promise would just shine so brightly in the midst of that fog. That it causes a personal resurrection in the soul. For Father God, you are faithful. 
You are a promise keeper. You do exactly what you said. If you said you're coming out of that grave, you're coming out of that grave. And if you said that we are coming out of this grave, then we are coming out of this grave, Father God. And we accept your promise today. We accept your word today. We accept what you have given us. To you belong all the glory and the praise. I thank you for putting us in the center of the stewardship of this command, this secret today. May we all produce great fruit. I pray for Pastor One and Pastor Confidence, Father God. I know leading is, has its own challenges, the church, ministry. And I've seen the genuineness in these people, Father God. My job here is to encourage them more than anyone else. Yeah. So I pray more than anybody else in this place that the secret would be theirs. They would own the secret. They would abide by the secret. The challenges of ministry, the winds and the waves are many. Encourage them today, Father God. Let's bridge the gap between what we have seen and what you have said. Father God, I pray for encouragement. I, uh, yeah, in fact, maybe even this word, Pastor, only more just for, for you and, and for confidence today. You've seen a lot. It, it, it can rattle you. But God is true. If he said he will rise from the dead, he would do exactly what he said. Pastor only he's going to do exactly what he said. Don't be discouraged. He would do exactly what he said. He would do exactly what he said. Let's accept that today. Every other voice, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. Every other opposition, every other challenge that rises up, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. You are a man and woman of God sent to this place for such a time as this. And, 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 and stars and sand are yours today, my brother. <laughs> stars and sand in abundance are yours today. Yeah, we're going to be just fine. He was gonna, he's going to do the impossible. You just hear and accept today. Yeah, that's all, all we do. He'll take care of the rest. It's beyond you. It's beyond you. Just hear and accept. He's driving. Hallelujah. We got this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you praise. Thank you all. Love you all so much. Thank you for having me. God bless you all.